it going, Monsignor? It's going very well and uh, very busy. Yes, it continues to be busy. It has been busy and it just doesn't stop. This week we started Alpha up again? We did, and uh, the report has been very positive. Uh, about 48 new people, but there was also a number of people who wanted to come and couldn't make the first one. Yes, I, I ran into some of them last night, actually. But the other side of that is that's not counting all the volunteers mm -hmm. that were present to make it an enjoyable evening. Awesome. So uh, we're looking at another uh, you know, another good, you know, series. Good. And it was only the first one, so it's not too late to come. So if you, you miss the first one, you can still come to the second one and be a part of that 11-part series, which is an introduction to Christ and um, the beginning. Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet, so it's like the beginning uh, of kind of rekindling your relationship with Jesus so that you can move forward into bigger and better things. And if you contact members of Catholic Conversation, they'll be able to give you the link so that before next Wednesday, if you want to just see what the video was about for this past Wednesday, you can watch it on your own, you know, computer, pad, or um, phone. iPhone. Mm -hmm. So last night was the Mass for Life. Bishop O'Connell came. Yes. How uh, was it? It was, it was a beautiful Mass. We had maybe about like 100 people, maybe oh. a little over 100. It, it wasn't a large turnout. I think part of that could also have been the weather. Oh yeah, people were very nervous about the weather. You know, uh, and um, so, but this mass really began as an attempt to allow our parish bus to leave earlier on uh, on the day of the march, which mm -hmm. is today. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but it was a beautiful mass, and um, you know, we'll continue to have the mass the night before the march. Great, and of course. What the March Monsignor is referring to is the March for Life in Washington, D.C., where we have, uh, how many people, do you know? Um, I believe we sent a full bus down. Oh, great. And I don't know how many buses from the diocese, but mm -hmm. I know that we have uh, sent a full bus, and I think there are a number of young people. Yes, some of our youth group are there. And uh, so I, um, it's really uh, very good. It's also, you can follow the march and some of the activities on the march uh, on C-SPAN. Oh. They, they do, uh, and also, of course, EWTN and uh, Catholic Faith um, Network, or TV, no, network. Um, it's the old telecare state, uh, channel. Um, they also do coverage. Good. All right. So we're praying for them for a safe march and a happy march and, uh, of course, and an end to abortion and the... Um, upholding of the sanctity of all human life from conception to natural death and in every circumstance we pray for that. Uh, last night was also pub theology. It was our final of the three sessions. Um, people are clamoring for more so we're going to um, <laughs> have more sessions probably in May. We're thinking about after Easter because the clergy needs to uh, recoup. <laughs> and um, Really? Yeah. <laughs> And we want to expand it too, and so did the people who came. They wanted to see more clergy there, so we'll have, we're going to invite, um, you know, more members of the clergy association, try to get a wider um, representation from our faith traditions, and um, they even gave us some suggestions on topics. So it'll oh, be good. really good. Good. Yeah. Good. Um, Speaking of. Yes. The dialogue mm -hmm. among Christians. Yes. Um, today begins the week of prayer. For Christian unity mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I believe you're sending out little petitions to mm -hmm. our brothers and sisters in Christ mm -hmm. to the other congregation we will be praying for them also at our daily mass that we um, we kind of see each other as co-workers and uh, brothers and sisters in Christ and not necessarily as competitors and uh, that we find the common ground so we can work together in service and to pray together for our brothers and sisters throughout the world that are being persecuted. At the moment, Christians are probably the most persecuted group in the world, uh, and a lot of those who are losing their lives are in Central and South America. Yeah. And uh, 
but also in Africa and in Asia. And so we need, we need to, to pray for those communities that are under assault, but we also need to recognize that it's not a Catholic, Orthodox, Protestant, or uh, non-denominational element, it's a Christian element, and we need to be prayerful, supportive, and open to service. Absolutely, and actually, speaking of service, and all of those things that Monsignor was just talking about, this Sunday is the MLK, MLK celebration that the um, Freehold Clergy Association sponsors. It's going to be at the um, Bethel AME Church at 4 p.m. There, It's in the bulletin this coming Sunday if you want to have a look. But um, that's where we also pray for this Christian unity, and f not just Christian, but interfaith unity, and um, really reflect on what our mission is as baptized people, as Catholics, um, but as people of God in general, and what our responsibility to one another is. So please come out to that. It really is, um, it's going to be a nice event. We have uh, reflections from local clergy and um, some choir stuff. There's going to be refreshments afterwards. I'm baking a cake. You know, I'm going to have cake. You can't. And I've heard on reliable uh, references that Jen is a great cook and a great baker. I am. I mean, I you mean, know. her sons vouch for her all the time. Yeah. They have not died. That right there is a testament. <laughs> anyway, um, right, so please come to the MLK service. And jump, another jumping off point is we have what used to be called the Three Faiths Dialogue. We renamed to Children of Abraham and Interfaith Conversation. And we have three sessions coming up. We have three sessions. The first session will be on the Holocaust and how our faith traditions understand and learn from this dark period in history. That will be on Wednesday, February 20th at, uh, of this year, uh, 7 p.m., and that will be held at Temple Sherry Emmeth, which is uh, on Craig Road in Manalapan. This will be probably maybe the sixth or seventh year that uh, we participated in um, three uh, in this program and it is a way of taking a common theme and seeing how both in Judaism Islam and Christianity how we interpret excuse me how we approach it and how we um, uh, live it and so um, I'm looking forward to it I always love going to those things I'm so thrilled that we got it back up and running um, it's gonna be good and again in the spirit of community we are having um, a Latino supper club on the 26th our um, Spanish prayer group Comunidad de Children of Mary <laughs> prayer group I, I can't speak Spanish de are, Maria Santissima. thank you Frank I'm useless in Spanish they're wonderful people and they're gonna be um, hosting a dinner for uh, anybody who wants to come, it's an opportunity to kind of get to know your neighbors, you know, those who are already worshiping with us, already part of our community, um, but culturally slightly different. So we want to get to know each other and, sh you know, share some food. And um, it's open to the entire community, not just uh, St. Robert. So we're going to have people from other uh, churches, other denominations here. And um, it will be very nice. So 6 o'clock on the 26th in Dead TC Hall. Um, again, they're providing the food. Um, I'm going to bring something. I know a couple other people are bringing something. If you want to bring something, nobody will stop you. Um, and this is a unity coalition of the Greater Freehold event, um, which is a group who is working to, again, promote community and respect and um, the dignity of all people in our community. <clears throat> now, this Sunday, is the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. Monsignor, where did the first Sunday in Ordinary Time go? Well, there's no first Sunday in Ordinary Time. How can that be? Well, because... It's math. I'm not good at math, but I know that two comes after one. I know. Well, we did have one. Where? It's called the first week in Ordinary Time. Ah. Starting on Monday after the baptism of the Lord, which was last Sunday, we began our first segment of uh, Ordinary Time. And uh, so 
what happened is, is that we don't really have a first Sunday in ordinary time. We begin with um, the second Sunday because we have this whole week. So and there's the first Monday of Ordinary Time. There's the first Monday, the first Tuesday, the first Wednesday. Uh, but then next Monday will be the second Monday of Ordinary Time. So, um, so it was just my brother. Um, and uh, so what happened is, is that uh, um, this allows us to... Um, begin ordinary time, and it's important for us to realize ordinary time isn't ordinary in the sense nothing is happening. It's just uh, signifying that each Sunday during this period will have an order. So this was the first week, Sunday becomes the second Sunday, beginning the second week, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. I think we go all the way up to seven. I think we do this year, yeah. Because um, Ash Wednesday is rather late. It's March 6th. So um, there is no first Sunday in ordinary time. All right, that's fine. That's fine, church, you know, with your math, that's wonderful, thank you. Now, Monsignor, you are not gonna be here to tape next week. I won't be here for the next two weeks. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to find special guest stars. So I uh, am going to be away for about two weeks uh, on vacation. And uh, I can assure you, I will be praying for everyone as I'm working on my tan. <laughs> Good. Get a tan for me too. I'm really quite pale. All right, I guess that's everything, right? Is that everything? I think so. Have a safe trip, Monsignor. Thank you. We I look forward to getting you back. I look forward to coming back. Not too soon, though. <laughs> God bless. God bless.